Hi there, this is Lee Thurburn and you're on live stream Lee. Welcome back to another day where we're going to talk about business, but today we're going to talk specifically about bubble.io and I am going to show you um, more about bubble, which I think is a fantastic tool for small businesses that want to rapidly develop some sort of increased functionality in their website um, and or an app that basically could be a platform. I mean, you could literally develop the equivalent of LinkedIn or Facebook on Bubble if you wanted to. Now, that's not the value of LinkedIn and Facebook. It's the size of their network. But I'm in the process of doing a pivot with my business and adding a, um, a, a directory system to my business. And I've done a lot of modeling on that with Bubble. And I've uh, provided the modeling to my uh, developers to help them get a better idea of what it is I actually want them to accomplish as they um, as they you know develop the system or modify the existing system to be able to do what I want it to do. So before I get started, I want to actually introduce you to uh, somebody that is quite honestly an important person for you to know. His name is Bob Hampton, and Bob Hampton is a Certified financial uh, per planner. He's a, he's basically a financial advisor and a CPA. He's a he's a guy that helps small business owners prepare for that day when they're no longer in business. And I don't mean going out of business. I mean selling your business. That's of course what you want to do is you want to sell your business. Bob Hampton uh, does a financial planning practice with a heavy emphasis on small business owners that want to. Uh, sell their business or they're in the process of selling their business or they want to prepare their business for a sale. Now, the fact is, we all got into business with a lot of different goals, but one of the goals, very common, is to sell our business and use that money for retirement. And if you don't craft that process correctly, you're going to end up paying the federal government a lot of money. And you should not pay the federal government any more money than you absolutely have to. So if you can plan your um, your sale of your business in such a fashion that you minimize your taxes, well, that's what you ought to do. And that's where Bob comes in. Bob is a bright guy. And he's also a lot of fun to talk to. He's fun to know. So go to LiveStreamLee.com. Click on the Bob Hampton link. Get in touch with Bob and talk to him. He'll be glad to tell you if he thinks he can help you or, and, um, you know, if he can, you know, take advantage of it because Bob is a, like I said, Bob's a smart guy. He's a good guy to know. And I'm going to now go ahead and transition over to share my screen. And we're going to jump into the bubble system. And let me just get this up and running here. So come over. Yep. We're now on Bubble, and I am logged into my account on Bubble, and I have this particular account that I'm calling Apricot Mail that we're going to jump into. So I have several different accounts. I've got several different projects going on, kind of all at the same time, and um, just different things that I'm doing for myself and for clients that um, um, are interesting. So on uh, Monday, yesterday, I actually ran into a little problem right at the end and I was having a problem I didn't know the answer to, but I thought I did. And so literally within about one minute after the broadcast yesterday, I found the solution. So I want to share that with you. Now, I was on a page where um, I think it's the start listing page where I had pricing and I had, yeah, down at the bottom of the start listing page, I, I was creating a sample for you of these placards with the pricing information. And what I had going on was I couldn't get these three to show up side by side, nice and neat. And so if I click on preview, you're going to see what I'm talking about. So uh, like here at the top of this page, when it comes up at the top of the page, we have nice three little neat side by side columns of information. Uh, looks really nice. And but down below, I was trying to create them and I couldn't get the center one to show up. Well, what happens, and I started showing you this, is there are groups. And the groups 
help to bound things together, bind things together. One of the reasons that you put things inside of a group box is to control the degree to which they spread out on a page. Well, um, I had created by accident another group box that was behind, and so it, it was causing the center uh, placard here to not get positioned correctly. So as you can tell, when I move my cursor over these things, um, the background shading and the border color changes. It's pretty subtle because the border is only one pixel, but it changes from black to, gr to green. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in, and we're just going to go ahead and, and do a little edit. So I'm going to double click on this uh, panel. I'm going to go into conditions, and I'm going to take the border all colors. I'm going to go ahead and add another condition, which is going to be a uh, border, uh, let's see, border style, border uh, roundness, border width. There we go. Border width, all borders. We're going to change the border width from a one to a two, and that's it. We're done. Now I'm going to um, come over here to the panel. Now you see this message. We have to refresh to get it to see. So we're now going to be able to hover over this left one, and we're going to get a thicker border. So that's a much thicker border. It still is small enough to be elegant, and it looks nice, uh, whereas here we have just a thin border. So a little bit thicker border, I think, looks good. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that real quickly to the other two so you can watch what I'm doing. So this is the center one. We're going to change the um, border. Um, let's see. All border, border style, border, border around this, border width. There we go. Border width. And we're going to change it to a two. Actually, I'm going to make this one a five just for grins so you can see what it looks like. And then we're going to change this one to a, uh, we're going to add the border um, um where is the border thick and the border width? We're going to change it to a two. So two is a little bit more elegant, but I've gone ahead and changed them. So now I'm going to just show you the, the difference. Whoops. Here we go. Show you the difference in a two versus a five. So here we have a two and here we have a five. Notice that is, in my opinion, almost too thick. And so we don't really want to uh, do that. But um, anyway, you can play around with conditional elements. Conditional elements are a lot of fun. They allow you to uh, make um, actions and, uh, you know, occur on your page. So now let's do the following. Let's go in and add a price and let's go in and add uh, some checkboxes. OK, so first we're going to put a price here. Well, price, um, really all this is is just a text field. So we're going to put a text field right here. And we're going to edit the text field. We're going to say, make it $10. And uh, there we go. We've got the $10. It shows up. Now we're going to come down and we're going to change or remove the style so that we can directly control the style. We're going to center the element on the page. We're going to make it bold. And I'm going to increase the size from a, I guess it's probably a 16. I'm going to increase it to 18. Now let's go ahead and make it larger. Whoops, excuse me. Let's go ahead and make it larger. Let's make it a 24. That's a nice big number. So we're going to just pull that up a little bit. There we go. Now that's nice. And we're going to right click on this element and we're going to center it horizontally. So that centers it within the page. Now what we're going to do is we're going to left click on, uh, are we actually going to do a, a control copy, control C. Now we're going to come over here and click on this panel, control we're going to place it in. We're going to place the same element about the same position. We're going to right click. We're going to center horizontally. And then I'm going to X and we're going to do exactly the same thing again. We're going to paste this over here. We're going to move it down and we're going to right click and we're going to center horizontally. So now we've got our prices in there. And if we wanted to, we can actually go in and make this a uh, like Per year. So I'm going to come back up and I'm going to just edit that per year. So we have that per year. And then this one, we're going to make it uh, $50, $50 per month. And then we're going to make this one $100, $100 per year. Okay. So now we've changed those up and we've got them you know, um, all nice. Now let's add in some uh, some text and some checkboxes. Okay, so 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of text. I'm going to make this text like this size, and then I'm going to put a checkbox uh, to the right of it. But let me just do this. Let me go ahead and, and change this text to say this is going to be condition or service or element or attribute number one. So I'll just make this um, CRM with shopping cart. Okay, so that becomes the text. And I'm going to make this sort of a standard size. And so what I want to do is I want to put an icon to the right. So I'm going to grab my icon indicator and I want to put an icon right here to the right. And I want to line them up. So um, I'm going to double click on the icon. Now here's my icon uh, panel. So I'm going to check on, click on icon. I'm going to write check. So I start typing check and here's a check. So we're going to do that. Now I'm going to come down to the style. I'm going to remove the existing style and I'm going to come down to, um, let's see here, where's the border? Background style. So we're going to do the color is going to be flat and we're going to make the element a, a nice bright but still sort of dark green. Oops, that's the background color. Huh. Change the wrong thing. So let's, uh, let's just go ahead and make that white. We want the background white and uh, the element color is actually where did it go? Where did it go? Style. Here we go. Border, flat color, style, tooltip, background. Oh, that's the flat color. So let's take this off. None. And I want to make, oh, here it is. The icon color right up here at the top. So we're going to click on this and we're going to make it a, a bright green with a little bit of darkness to it. So now that's, that's a nice looking bright green, but we're going to move it over to the right a little bit. And so what I want to do is I want to get these perfectly aligned. So I'm going to, um, let's see here. Put, yeah, that's perfectly aligned. I'm looking at the little, the little boxes on the line. So everything's perfectly aligned. I'm going to go ahead and bring this over. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this and I'm going to click on this with a, with my shift key. So I've got both of them. I'm going to hit control C and control V, I copy them both and I move them down and I'm just gonna stack this here. And so now what I'm doing is I'm creating a list, okay? So this is how you create a list. So if you wanna create a list, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually do this real quick. I'm gonna grab all four of them and control C, control V. So we're going to just make this list nice and quick. And let's say I want to make one of the items not included, okay? so I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to come over to the icon. I'm going to uh, look for I type T-I-M for times. I'm going to get that. I'm going to make this a red. So that now, let's make it a bright red. So now when you look at it, see one of my elements is not included. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab a button and I'm going to put down at the bottom. And we're going to say um, start here. So we've now got the text to start here on the button. And now we want to make that button do something. Okay, so if we want to make that button do something, we go ahead and next to the center of the button first. We're going to center horizontally and move the button just a little bit. So um, now that we've got everything all set up, we can actually, um, we didn't need to spend all the time creating these individual elements. So if you create your first sort of element group, what you can do is you can just highlight this and delete everything, highlight this and delete everything. And now we can take this element and we control C, control V. We're copying the element. We now just move it over like this and then get it centered about. We go ahead and right click on the element and uh, center horizontally. So that centers it. And now we're going to do this control C, control V, create another one and bring it over here. And, um, now we have these elements uh, nice and spaced on the page. And now we can simply go in and just change the price and so on. So you can actually develop one element first and then get it looking the way you want and then just copy it. It makes it really fast to develop. So this might be, as we are going to call it, e-commerce. Okay, and then this one would be um, guaranteed vendor. Okay, and then we click. So see how nice and easy that is? Now we, we're just changing things up. And if we go ahead and preview, 
you're going to see that on the page uh, when we refresh the page, um, it now has all of the different um, boxes that we have now dressed up and made look like they're finished, even though they're not. Okay, let's go ahead and click refresh. These are the ones I started with as examples up at the top. Here are the ones I've just built for you to show you down at the bottom. And um, that I think is pretty cool. That's a pretty fast way to be able to develop a very potent, powerful, attractive um, visual interface, the user interface. Now, the next thing is, what do you want this to do? And so uh, in this particular use case, what I would want it to do is I would want it to uh, take you to a checkout process or something like that. Now, I'm not going to try to build that during this session. And in fact, I'm uh, going to actually be using a different checkout process. But um, so what I've done now is I've shown you how to do some fundamental things with uh, sort of with bubble. Now, um, I'm going to actually just go since I don't need these on the page. I'm, uh, I'll just leave them up. Doesn't matter. I was going to delete them, but I'm just going to leave them up. So um, the next thing I want to I want to actually show you and talk about is um, I'm going to um, create a new page. We're going to go ahead and do something fun. We're going to um, add a new page. So I'll click add new page and I'm just going to give it a name, new test. Okay. And we're not going to clone anything. We're just creating a page. It's a blank page called new test. Okay. So on this page, I'm going to very quickly create a database and add um, a list of data to the database. And so I'm going to um, actually just go over here to my database databases. I'm going to look and see what I've got. So I've got a database for users, for team, for state, uh, CRM records, client type. I've got all kinds of things here. I'm actually uh, using this to, to experiment with some integrations with my uh, Apricot Rocket CRM system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this user database and I'm going to look at it and I've got business name, um, I've got client, yes or no. I've got, so I've got a business name, which is, comes from the business profile. I've got a CRM record that goes to the CRM records. Um, I've got a client type, which goes to client type. So when you see these here, these actually indicate other databases or other uh, tables, other data types that I've, uh, I've added. So rather than try to jump in here, I'm just going to create a new data type. I'm going to call this demo uh, test. So this is our demo test data type. Now in the demo test data type, I'm going to create some data fields. First name, and this is a field type text, and we're going to create another one, last name, and this is also a field type text. And we're going to create a um, another one that's going to be phone, and this is field type number, and uh, we're going to uh, create an image, okay? Create a field type um, photo. So we'll call it, it was just like we're making a little profile page, okay? So what we're going to do is we now have in our data in our data set or data type called demo test, we have first name, last name, phone, and photo, four pieces of information. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over to my design page. And on this page, I'm going to put a, um, um, a repeating group. So we're going to just grab this repeating group and put it right here. And uh, now your repeating group has a variety of things you can do. First of all, you want to tell the system what data type. So I'm going to be using demo test as my data type. That's the type of content that's going to be going into this repeating group. And um, we're not going to worry about data source. Well, actually, we're going to do data source, do a search for, and we're going to search for all demo test data. So now we're grabbing all the data from the demo test, and we're just going to be putting it in here. Now, you can control the number of rows and the number of columns. So I'm just going to make this really nice and thick so there's a lot of room in here. So that's the number of rows. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put some things in there. So I'm going to put an image right in here. So this will be like, um, like a list page. There's going to be an image. We're going to make the image. We're going to insert a dynamic image. We're going to do the current user. Um, actually, let's do this. The current cell demo tests 
um, photo. There we go. Turn sales demo test photo is going to go there. And then we're going to insert some text. We're going to insert the, um, the, the, the first name and the last name. Let's do the, uh, la the, the, the last name first. I mean, <laughs> we're going to insert demo test first name. So we're going to make the first name. Now I'm going to have to increase this size a little bit so that we can see it. Now we're just going to copy this and move it down. And we're going to copy this and move it down. So now we have three pieces of information that are all kind of nice and neat stacked up here. And um, let's see here. I think we've got them pretty close to being perfectly stacked. Okay. So now we're going to click on the second one and we're just going to click on first name. We're going to put last name. So now we change that to last name and then we're going to click here and we're going to change it to phone number. So now we've got demo data showing here, but we don't have any data in the database yet. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop back over to the database and we're in the demo test database. So I'm going to go to app data and I'm going to add a new entry. I'm just going to add some data. So uh, what type of thing are we going to add? We're going to add demo test. So the first name is going to be Leroy Laker, phone number 445557788888. And um, I'm going to go ahead and add a photo. So I'm just going to grab a graphic for a photo. doesn't matter what the graphic is. We're going to load a photo. There it shows up. And... Um, we can worry about the slug later, but I'm going to go ahead and click create. We're going to create the record. I don't need to see this message again in the future. Now I'm going to add one more entry. Um, copy and restore. Okay, so one more entry. And let's see, type of thing is going to be demo test. And we're going to make this um, Bubba Jones and uh, phone number 888-777-5555. And we'll add another image. And we're going to make this image, um, well, we'll just make it a different Appy Rocket image. Um, we'll make it this one. Okay, so different image. And now we're going to click Create. And so we should now have, under all demo tests, we should have two records, and we do. And so now if we go back to design um, and we don't see anything here, well, you don't see anything in this particular view. So this particular view is the, um, the design view. If you want to see it, you have to click on preview. So we're going to go to preview. We're going to load the page. And in the page, we're going to see our uh, data show up. And where's our data? Oh, gosh, it doesn't show up. Why doesn't it show up? Well, you know what? This particular issue bugged me and bugged me and bugged me. And I finally figured out what it is. And if he, if you have this happen to you, um, there is a simple fix. You go over to data and you go to privacy and um, you go to privacy for demo test and there is no rules set up. OK, so demo test privacy, no rules set up. So we don't have that issue with our app data. So let's see here. We've got Bubba Jones, Bubba Jones. Let's look at the Bubba Jones. Why does that not show up? Here we go. Bubba Jones. Got all the phone numbers, everything in here. We're going to go ahead and save it. Now we're going to come back. Uh, say, got it. I don't need to see this message modifying an entry. Let's go back to design. And um, let's see what we have here. Demo test. Search for demo test. Okay. Possibly I need to set this page to have demo test data on it. So let's just, let's see here, current cell demo test, first name. Let's try this. Let's, let's change this out entirely and see what we have here. So we're going to, we're going to click here. We're going to demo the current cell, current users. Okay. So we don't have a connection between the user table and uh, the demo test. Okay. So demo test does, cannot be reached here. So we need to use the demo test and we're going to do first name and um, let's see here our copy what are we going to make the color the color should be you know dark okay so let's do that and um, let's see here so we have inside let's go look at the page let's double click on the page 
And here's the page, page title, apricot mail, type of content. Let's go down here and make demo test the page content. So now let's see if we can see the page content when we go to the page. There we go. That was it. <laughs> uh, yay, it worked. <laughs> I'm so tickled. So um, now we're displaying data. And we're displaying data in a, um, in a repeating group. And a repeating group is the tool that you use most commonly to be able to generate, um, uh, generate lists. Now, if you already have data in a list, you can use a repeating group to generate that. But you can also, gen you can also use the ability to add data to a, a repeat or to a, a data type and then have it immediately show up in the list. I think I have enough time to be able to actually do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, have a couple of things. I'm going to um, I'm going to add a group. So we're going to click the group thing. I'm going to add a group right here. So inside this group, we're going to make this type of content uh, demo test. OK, and um, data source we're not going to worry about. So I'm going to make this um, so I can see the box easily. I'm going to put an outline on the box. I'm going to put a border of um, two and a border color just nice and dark so I can see the box. Okay, so there's the box. I want to drag stuff into it. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to grab an input form and I'm going to put an input form right here. And this is going to be um, just, I'm not going to change up the holder. It's text content and I'm going to put a button. Okay, so Let's do this. That's going to be an input form. Uh, let's do this. We're going to create a copy of the input form. And I'm going to um, actually put, actually, I don't want a third one. I'm going to put a button down at the bottom. So now we're going to have a button, which is going to be add. So let's double click on this button. We're going to call this add data. Okay, so that's the button. Now we're going to come back to the workflow in just a minute, but we're going to we're going to name this. Double click on it. We're going to name this. This input form is going to be input first name. Okay, so we're going to name that one. Now we're going to name this one. Is going to be um, input last name, and um, we're going to name this one input phone. Double click um, input phone. And we're going to make this content format is going to be um, an integer. Okay, so it's number. Okay, so now we've got that. So now we're going to click on add data, double click on it, double click on it. We're going to go to start edit workflow. When the add data button is clicked, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, do a create new thing. So data type, create new thing. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a demo test record. We're going to set some fields, and what we're going to do is we're going to click to set the field. First name is going to be equal to input first name, and then we're going to input first names. Let's go back down here. Input first names value. Okay. Uh, last name is going to be an input of last name's value, and phone's name is going to be input phone's value. OK, so we're now going to we have everything set up and then we're going to do one more thing. We're going to add one more action and we're going to go to um, uh, element actions. and We're going to reset the inputs on the element. So uh, just one click. So we're good to go. So now if I go back to design, I've got this all set up. And so if I go to preview, uh, if I reshare the page, I should have a form on the right hand side that allows us to input information into, come on. I should have a form on the right-hand side that allows us to input information. So if I'm Mary Jacobs and uh, 555-222-3333 and I click add data, boom, there Mary Jacobs shows up. She's been input into the database. Um, there you go. We have just made an interactive form and an interactive display. This is powerful stuff. It is amazing, almost what you can do with just these two functionalities. But having search functionalities and other things certainly makes it a lot more fun. So uh, we're done for today. 
Uh, this is uh, just a little sample of kind of how fast and easy it is to create uh, interactive functionality. And there's a lot that you can do with the, um, I'm going to go ahead and come back over here to StreamYard. Here we go. There's a lot that you can do. Uh, there's a lot that you can do with Bubble. Uh, we just scratched the surface, but being able to create a list and put an input process where you put information in is just scratching the surface, but it's really cool. So um, come back tomorrow and we'll learn some more things. And um, I'll see you on live stream, Lee, tomorrow at three o'clock. Thanks for tuning in. And um, that's it. Cheers. Bye.